Hi, my name is Annalene and today I want to talk about all of the books that I read in 2023. I read 14 books in the last year and I want to talk about all of them. <laughs> I'm just going to go briefly over these. I will give you my star rating, my general thoughts and a little bit of a spoiler free summary. I started off this year with reading the entire A Court of Thorns and Roses series. <laughs> I started reading A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas in September of 2022. And actually the first one, I still enjoyed it, but it took me quite a while to get through it. Um, even though this is one of the shorter novels in the Sarah J Maas universe. But at the end of December in 2020, I decided to pick it up again. And then I actually finished it in January. I loved it. So the first part I was fully sucked in. I loved it. Then in the middle, it kind of lost me, which is that gap that we have in my reading journey. And then at the end, I was like, I need more. <laughs> and so right away, I started reading A Court of Mist and Fury, but more about that later. The A Court of Thorns and Roses series is a fantasy series. It is about Feyre. She's human and she lives in a world where there's also fairies, but the fairies and the humans are divided by a wall, I think. She's at the south and the fairies are in the north. And one day she goes out hunting. She's not very well off. She kills a wolf and then it turns out to be a fairy and she gets taken to fairyland and then we see her adventures in fairyland it's not called fairyland <laughs> that's just what i'm calling it this reminded me a lot of the hunger games which sneak peek i also read this year so more on that later it gave me hunger games vibes in the beginning not only because favorite is a huntress and she goes out in the woods and, you know archery and stuff uh, but also just the pacing the writing style it just made me feel as if i was 10 years younger and reading the hunger games for the first time and i loved it um and then later on it gets a little bit more um adult than the hunger games is i gave this book four stars out of five and when I started reading A Court of Mist and Fury, I was like, this is even better. <laughs> we follow Feyre still um, in the fairyland. And I do have to admit that the second one in the series and the third one, A Court of Wings and Ruin, they kind of blur together in my head. I don't even know what the end of this book is, but the end of this book made me cry. And so I gave this a five star review and this one too. And I loved all of the characters that are introduced because, you know, of course, in the first book, we meet Feyre, her family, and then a few other fairies. But in this one, things like really pick up. We get to discover a lot more of the world, which is really cool. Then I took a short break, I think, and then I read Shadow and Bone. <laughs> Shadow and Bone is also a fantasy series, um, but it is young adult. And while I still like this book, I much prefer the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So I'm kind of on the fence whether I read it at the right time, you know, following this. <laughs> the magic system in this book is really cool, but what I didn't really like was like the aspect of high school. Um, it was a little bit too YA for me, I would say. It's a little bit too focused on relationships in like a sort of childlike way. It's like, oh, she's going to high school, sort of. And there's the bully and those are the popular kids. And I just didn't really enjoy that setting, which is strange because usually I love like a good coming of age high school set story. Like I love the Netflix series, Never Have I Ever. So I don't really understand why it didn't really jive with me in this book i think it was because you have the stakes of being like there's this huge villain <laughs> and then also we are worried about petty drama also i don't think the main character is very smart i was just so annoyed at her from time to time <laughs> This book is about Alina. She discovers that she has magical powers, even though she's not supposed to have them. Um, and she gets introduced to this school to learn how to use her powers. She has a very rare power um, and it's the power that is kind of like described as the savior of the race. The world in this book is pretty interesting. It's based on Russia. Like a lot of the names have this Russian feel to it. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. The villain in this one is also pretty cool, but I'm just not really sure if I want to keep reading it. I have the second and the third book already. I got them on Vinted 
so I might give them a go. I, I gave this four stars, so I must have liked this enough. <laughs> I feel like I'm being a little bit too negative about it um, at the moment, but if you want to hear more about my thoughts about this book, I have a full reading vlog about it, and then you can see me read it and give my thoughts as I go. After Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. I went on to read A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. This is a novella. It's The writing is also a lot bigger than the other ones. Um, and I have to admit that it took me longer to read this book than it took me to read this book. I gave this, I think, three or maybe three and a half stars on my story graph. And um, it's just kind of like a Christmas special. <laughs> it's about winter festivities in the fairyland, Farah and all her friends are giving gifts to each other and there's a little bit of drama. And to be honest, I just didn't really care. <laughs> um, so if I were to read the series again, I would skip this one. And then after that, I read A Court of Silver Flames, which if I could, I would give it more stars than five stars out of five. I loved this. Just, uh, I love the main character. The main character is Farah's sister. So this book is kind of like a off in the series um, A Court of Thorns and Roses. It still very much is linked to it. It has all of the same characters, but we follow a different protagonist. Nessa goes through beautiful character development. I related very much to her. I also have a full video about this book and I just loved every second. I have a minor, minor, not gripe, but I just have a minor problem with the way that it ended to be honest i feel like nesta did something that i feel like it was wrapped up a little bit too nicely but that doesn't mean that i didn't enjoy every other page <laughs> um it was so good i spent through it i think i also read this more quickly than i read this one um it was just beautiful perfect girl power. <laughs> so this is about Nessa who also ends up in fairyland and she decides to have some training, combat training. And it's about her journey to kind of accept herself, accept her fate and the friends that she makes along the way. There's a lot of girl power in this, you know, women supporting women, girls being girls, girls, just I love it. <laughs> After that, I started with rereading The Hunger Games. I read this 10 years ago and I felt it was time to read it again. And why was that? Because I wanted to read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes before I went to go and see the movie that came out in November. So I started reading The Hunger Games. I loved every second of it. Um, this is a classic, I would say. <laughs> this book is about a dystopian version of North America where all of the power is in the capital, which is a small, rich part of the country. And they organize the Hunger Games each year where they select one young man and one young woman, read a child, um, <laughs> from each district. Districts are the poor parts of the country, basically. And those children that are being picked they fight to the death in the Hunger Games. And this is about Katniss who ends up in the Hunger Games and it is amazing. I love Katniss in this book. I love Peta in this book, especially Peta. Like I forgot how much I loved him. I gave this book five stars out of five back in 2012 and also in 2023. I then also read Catching Fire, which is the second novel in the series. Um, I won't spoil what this one is about if you for some reason have not read it. <laughs> I would say that this one is about as good as the first one. It's also very tense, suspenseful, action-packed. We meet a lot of new characters that really, you know, find a way into your heart and it is genius, so. And so I gave this five stars as well. Then I read Mockingjay, which is my least favorite out of the three. I gave this, I think, 3.75 or something <laughs> stars. Look, look at this. Now a major motion picture. <laughs> March 23, 2012. Wow. I think my main problem with this one is that it's kind of... I'm gonna say it, it's kind of boring in the middle there. It takes a while to pick up and to find out, to figure out what this story is going to be. Um, but still a good read and it prepared me to read 
The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which is a prequel to the Hunger Games series. It is set about 60 years, I think, 64 years before the uh, original Hunger Games book. Um, and it follows, actually, the president from the Hunger Games when he was a kid and his experience with the Hunger Games. He has to mentor one of the kids, the District 12 kid, just like um, Katniss was, uh, to try and win the Hunger Games. And we see how he does that. We get a good glimpse, a good understanding of what he thinks about that, how he feels about his place in the world. It's very suspenseful. I think at the time of reading this, I gave this like three and a half stars, maybe four. But then I watched the movie like a week later and it made me appreciate the book a little bit more, actually. I really enjoyed it and I think reading this right before I saw the movie also made me appreciate the movie more because I already kind of knew the um, intentions that Snow, the uh, character, the main character had and it just kind of all made sense to me the first time I watched the movie which I was kind of afraid of that I wouldn't maybe get it or something. If you haven't seen the movie yet and you still want to read the book go for it. I think it is really valuable to read the book first and then watch the movie. Actually, in between those books, I also read two other books. First, I read Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zauner. This is a memoir. This was one of the books that I had to read for my book club and um, it's really good. It is about Michelle whose mother is terminally ill. She's been diagnosed with cancer. It talks about the last months of her mother's life and the months after it, how Michelle deals with it, how it affects her family and her relationships and her relationship with her mother. Michelle is also Asian American. Her mother is from South Korea, I believe. It also talks about her relationship with South Korea, with America, with how her mother's side of the family is acting a lot different from what her American side would do. She's kind of conflicted between not feeling quite American but also not feeling South Korean. Um, so it also has that duality in there, which was really interesting to read. I highly recommend this. I give this four stars out of five. I also read Anne of Manhattan by Rena Starler. Uh, this is a fan fiction, I would say. <laughs> this is a modern retelling of Anne of Green Gables, although I would call it more of an alternate universe than a retelling, to be honest. Um, if you don't know, Anne of Green Gables is one of my favorite books. If you've seen the show Anne with an E, you kind of know what it's about. Anne of Green Gables is about Anne who gets adopted by an elderly brother and sister in Prince Edward Island, where she tries to navigate the world. Her new parents, her new family, the new classmates that she makes, she's a little bit clumsy, she's a little bit hot-tempered, um, and we just follow her story throughout the years. She meets Gilbert Blythe, who is kind of her rival at school. They are both very, very smart and they try to one-up each other constantly, but of course, eventually, they fall in love. And this is a modern retelling of that story where they meet when they were younger and then later on they meet again and they fall in love. It's really, it is a very cozy rivals to lovers story, um, but I do have to admit, if you are a big Anne of Green Gables fan, then I am not actually sure if I would recommend this to you because, so it's called Anne of Manhattan. So instead of that, she's in Prince Edward Island, she's on in Manhattan, which is fine, but they also not made her from Nova Scotia. In Anne of Green Gables, she's originally from Nova Scotia. And I don't really understand why they made this change. And for some reason, it just, it just didn't vibe with me. And I know it's like a petty thing to be bothered by, but I am bothered by it. And also at about the two third point, Anne makes like a stupid decision that I don't think that she would ever have done in the original series that I just don't really think is in character. That kind of bothered me too. So I gave this three and a half stars out of five because I did enjoy the romance of it but there's also parts that I just really didn't enjoy and I really don't feel like it is a retelling of Anne of Green Gables it's just kind of like an alternate universe. Then I read Panther by Brecht Evers, I think. I don't have that book physically. It is a graphic novel and at first I was really into it and then it disturbed me completely. <laughs> so it is a book that stuck with me. This was again um, a book that I had to read for the book club. Had to read. 
that I read voluntarily, gladly, <laughs> for the book club that I'm a part of, but I don't think I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed the first part and then like the final 10 pages freaked me out. <laughs> I don't really want to recommend it, um, but it definitely did stuck with me. And the summary of this book is that it's about a girl, a young girl, she's like maybe eight or something, and her cat dies, unfortunately. But when she's sad at night, a panther appears from her wardrobe and consoles her. And that's where it starts off and we see that relationship develop and things happen is all I can say about that. And then lastly, I read House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. So I'm starting off with Sarah J Maas and I'm ending with Sarah J Maas, which I really liked. I finished this book on the 31st of December. I was like, I am going to finish this. <laughs> I loved it. This book is also a fantasy, but it's more an urban fantasy compared to A Court of Thorns and Roses. This is very much like medieval, no technology. But in this one, people have phones, smartphones and cameras and other stuff that we have today. I really like that. I had never read a urban fantasy before, so that was all new to me. The world building is quite extensive, but I do feel like it's not as extensive as people tend to make it out. It appears as though the first half of this book is nothing but info dumping and this is sort of true but it's also not like you need to like understand all of it right away or remember it all, all of it from the get-go. You get reminded of what you've learned later on so when it becomes relevant <laughs> so that's okay. This book is about Bryce. She is half fae, half human because um, in this world there's not only humans and fairies but also vampires, angels, shapeshifters, stuff like that, witches, more. Everything that you can imagine is there. Bryce is half fairy, half human which kind of places her at like the bottom of the social ladder right above us regular humans. She has a good life, she is having fun, partying, she's just like a normal 23 year old, but one day something happens which shakes her up completely. She and Hunt, a fallen angel, are put together on a case to figure out. So there's been a murder and they have to discover what happened who is behind it and what is going to happen next. But I really enjoyed it. Um, it had kind of like Zootopia vibes <laughs> um, where you just like, you know, you follow one clue and then the other in a big city and um, it's it has twists and turns, really good characters. I really loved Bryce as a main character. I think I enjoy her more than Feyre but not as much as Nesta. <laughs> if we want to compare. Although it is a chunky boy, I read through it pretty quickly because I was just sucked into the story so much. I loved the world and the world building and the character development and I just loved everything about it. I gave this five stars out of five and I'm currently reading the second book in the series. So those were all of the books that I read in 2023. My initial goal was to read 15 books. I got to 14, but given that like a few of them are huge, huge boys, I'm still very proud. <laughs> Have you read any of these books? Let me know in the comments down below or what was your favorite read from 2023? Mine was definitely A Court of Silver Flames, closely followed by House of Earth and Blood. I'm a new Sarah J Maas girly. I never thought that I would be because I've known of her for literal years and I was always kind of hesitant to read her books. But if you want to hear me talk more about especially uh, this chunk of the series of A Court of Thorns and Roses. I have a whole video about that too. I should also mention that I created an Instagram account, a bookstagram. It's called Lunan Books, where I give you more frequent updates about what I'm reading and loving. Um, so if you want to follow me on there, I will link it in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know that you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time.